Tonight, tensions are rising over the nuclear power plant in Ukraine and fears of a potential disaster in the making as the U.S. unveils a massive new military aid package for Ukraine. 24 hours after President Zelensky's dire warning about the danger at the nuclear facility, the U.S. is now rolling out $775 million worth of ammunition and artillery. For the first time, the U.S. is sending Scan Eagle surveillance drones along with rockets and new howitzers. All of this as new shelling hits dangerously close to that power plant. Ukraine is accusing Russia of using it as a military base, growing fears of possible radiation spreading across Europe as hundreds flee to neighboring towns. The tropical storm warnings just issued as we come on the air. The system looking to bring flooding rain to Texas. New monsoon storms target the southwest. Flash flood alerts from Texas to Arizona. Talks are underway between the January 6th committee and former Vice President Mike Pence's team. This after Pence said that he would consider an invitation to testify. Jonathan Carl one-on-one -on -one with the committee's vice chair, Congresswoman Liz Cheney. And this question, will lawmakers ask former President Trump to testify as well? Emotional testimony from Vanessa Bryant in her lawsuit against Los Angeles County. The wife of Kobe Bryant says she lives in fear of her children seeing the graphic photos first responders took and then shared of the helicopter crash that killed her husband, daughter Gianna, and seven others. The Biden administration issues a new ultimatum to U.S. airlines following months of massive flight delays and cancellations. The Department of Transportation tells 10 carriers to do more to help stranded passengers or face new government regulations. The immigration stare down intensifies between Texas and New York City. Governor Greg Abbott sends two more buses of asylum seekers today, including 15 children and a pregnant woman in urgent need of medical care. How the city is now working to find a place for everyone. Investigators search for the cause of a deadly mid-air collision. Three people killed. The pilots heard radioing each other right before the crash. The massive fire seen for miles in Massachusetts, flames destroying buildings, cars, and boats. New Orleans mayor threatens to call off Mardi Gras, the critical shortage that could cancel the celebrations. And the Little League World Series. Teams pay tribute to an injured player, his little brother taking to the field. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday night. I'm Lindsay Davis in for David. Tonight, the tropical storm warnings just in. We'll get to that in a moment, but we do begin with a major announcement just 24 hours after Ukraine's president warned that Russia's occupation of that massive nuclear plant has put the world on the verge of nuclear disaster. The United States promises a new round of military aid to Ukraine. That nuclear plant, the largest in all of Europe, is now at the center of a dangerous confrontation. Rockets falling close by, each side is blaming the other. Communities in the area are bracing for the worst, conducting disaster drills, stockpiling iodine tablets. And sadly, people in Russian-controlled areas are fleeing their homes, evacuating to safer parts of Ukraine. The Pentagon is now pledging $775 million in new military aid, more rockets, javelins, and drones. And tonight, as Russia's war in Ukraine approaches the six-month mark, Secretary of State Antony Blinken reiterates that the U.S. will support Ukraine for as long as it takes. ABC's Britt Klenet leads us off inside Ukraine. Tonight, the U.S. announcing a massive $775 million military aid package for Ukraine. It includes more ammunition for the HIMARS rocket systems, 16 new howitzers, and for the first time, the Pentagon sending 15 Scan Eagle reconnaissance drones to better identify key Russian targets. It comes amid growing fears of an impending disaster at Europe's largest nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia that could lead to radiation contamination across the continent. Russia ordering staff not to show up to work today as both sides warn of an escalation. Ukraine accuses Russia of using the plant as a military base. Ukrainian officials posting this video showing Russian vehicles inside the plant. ABC News has not verified the date this video was taken. After shelling, newly released before and after satellite images from several days ago show scorch marks in the area near the plant. Nearby communities taking no chances, conducting disaster drills in response to those attacks. First responders practiced putting on protective gear and treating the injured. Hundreds fleeing the Russian-occupied areas around the plant, families gathering together, consoling each other. 
We've been told there would be a huge convoy of cars coming in from the Russian-occupied areas, and here they are, taking everything they can with them to get to safety. 14-year-old Maria Zalata relieved to finally be in non-occupied territory with her brother after a two-day journey. My mom also crying because it's that's so uh, so big happiness. Such a relief for these families who managed to escape. Let's get right to Brit Clinic in Ukraine. Brit, what's the latest on the status of that nuclear plant? Well, Lindsay, the mayor of Enerhada, who's in exile in Zaporizhia, he told us that despite the renewed attacks, radiation levels at the plant are still normal, for now at least. Now, tonight, President Zelensky also thanking President Biden for the new aid and says a plan is in the works to send a UN team to that nuclear power plant under threat in Zaporizhia. Lindsay. All eyes on that nuclear plant, Britt, thank you. Back here now, the tropical storm warnings just issued. South Texas is bracing for wind and rain as monsoon rains batter the southwest. A mixed blessing for drought-stricken Texas. This truck in Pasadena tumbling off an overpass in heavy rain. The driver miraculously jumping out before it falls. And tonight, that new system in the Gulf of Mexico coming together rapidly could combine with monsoon rains. Meteorologist Cheryl Scott from our Chicago station WLS joins us now. Cheryl, time this tropical threat all out for us. Yes, yeah, so Lindsay, we're now looking at an 80% chance that this tropical disturbance forms and develops into a named storm. Let's take you to the maps, and you can see the storm rapidly developing here in the Gulf. It's going to quickly move up to the north and west. Tropical storm warnings for the coast of Texas and also Mexico expected to make a landfall into the day tomorrow. This moisture is going to feed into the desert southwest, where we have flood watches from Arizona into New Mexico. Slow moving thunderstorms, flooding rains, where we're looking at potentially two to three plus inches, and then all of this rain shifts to the east where drought stricken Texas could see five to seven plus inches of rain flash flooding the flood threat. Great, Lindsay. All right, we need some of that rain in the northeast. Cheryl, thank you. Now to that intriguing remark from former Vice President Mike Pence saying he would consider testifying before the January 6th committee if he was asked. Tonight, Representative Liz Cheney, the Republican vice chair of that committee, weighing in on that possibility in an exclusive interview. And will former President Trump be asked to testify as well? Here's ABC's chief Washington correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Former Vice President Mike Pence says he would consider testifying before the January 6th committee. And today, that committee's vice chair, Liz Cheney, told me talks are already underway on making that happen. He said this week he's willing or willing to consider testifying if he is asked. Are you going to ask him? So we've been in discussions uh, with his counsel when the country has been through something as grave as this was, uh, everyone who has information has an obligation to step forward. So uh, I would hope that, that he will do that. So you think we'll see him here in September in this room I before would the hope committee? That, well, uh, I would hope that he, he will understand how important it is uh, for the American people to know uh, every aspect of the truth about what happened that day. No comment tonight from the former vice president. He was right in the middle of it all on January 6th, defying Trump and facing violent threats as a result. Though his top advisors have testified before the committee, Pence himself has been reluctant to talk about what happened that day, sometimes even downplaying it. But now as he considers his own run for president, Pence says he is ready to open up about what he went through. The American people have a right to know what happened that day. And in the months and years ahead, I'll be telling my story even more frequently. Then there's the question of Donald Trump. Could he be asked to testify too? Cheney did not close the door. I don't want to make any announcements about that uh, this morning. But it's possible you'd, you'd ask him before wrapping up to testify. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, again, I, I don't want to get in front of uh, committee deliberations about that. I do think it's very important. His interactions with our committee uh, will be under oath. Jonathan Carl joins us now from Washington. And John, if Republicans take over the Congress in midterms, the work of the January 6th committee will soon come to a grinding halt. Congresswoman Cheney clearly aware the clock is ticking here. She's keenly aware that time is running out and looking to do all that she can do uh, before the end of this Congress. I would look, uh, Lindsay, for uh, at least two more hearings, potentially uh, high impact, high profile hearings uh, in the fall and of course, a final report. Jonathan Carl, our thanks to you.
Now to the emotional testimony from Vanessa Bryant, the widow of NBA star Kobe Bryant, in her lawsuit over photos from the helicopter crash that killed her husband and daughter Gianna. Bryant sued L.A. County and some of its employees after those photos were shared, even allegedly passed around at a bar. Bryant says that she lives in fear every day that her three surviving daughters will see those pictures. Here's reporter Veronica Miracle from our Los Angeles station, KABC. A heartbroken Vanessa Bryant entering a California courthouse to face a day of grueling testimony in the trial over leaked photos from the horrific helicopter crash that killed her husband Kobe, 13-year-old daughter Gianna, and seven others. Bryant in tears telling the jury, I'm upset about what they did to my husband and daughter. I want answers. She's suing L.A. County agencies for negligence and invasion of privacy, alleging officers abused their access to the crash site by taking Taking and sharing gratuitous photos of her family's remains. Breaking down on the stand, Bryant said, I live in fear every day. I don't want my children to ever come across them. When Bryant arrived at the scene of the January 2020 crash in the Santa Monica Mountains, she says she pleaded with law enforcement, if you can't bring my babies back, then please secure the area. Her suit alleges that they did not and later tried to cover up the photos that were spreading among officers and being shared with members of the public. One officer even allegedly showing off the photos at a bar. Bryant only learning of their existence over a month later in media reports. I wanted to run down the block and just scream, she said. I trusted them not to do these things. My husband and daughter deserve dignity. I want to remember my husband and daughter the way they were. And Lindsay, tonight, a lawyer for L.A. County saying in a statement the county worked hard to make sure those photos were never widely distributed and that evidence will show they never were. Lindsay. Veronica, thank you. Now to that warning to the airlines after a disastrous summer travel season. The Department of Transportation is telling them to step up and do better when cancellations and delays occur, providing meal vouchers and hotel accommodations. The DOT is also set to launch a new website to help passengers understand their rights. Here's ABC's transportation correspondent, Gio Benitez. Tonight, the Department of Transportation putting airlines on notice, saying fix your problems or new rules are coming. Secretary Pete Buttigieg writing to America's 10 largest carriers that the level of disruption Americans have experienced this summer is unacceptable, noting that in the first six months of this year, roughly 24% of domestic flights have been delayed and 3% canceled. The secretary has said to take a step back. Let's rethink where we are in the industry and actually get back to scheduling an operation that you can actually accommodate. The airline's lobbying group not staying quiet, responding that the pandemic has wreaked havoc on all businesses, saying industries across the economy are facing a range of challenges, including a tight labor market. And the government tonight with direct requests for airlines to provide meal vouchers for delays of three hours or more and lodging accommodations for passengers who must wait overnight at an airport because of disruptions within the carrier's control. So what are you owed if an airline cancels or delays your flight? Well, the Department of Transportation now says it's going to launch a website in the next few weeks making that crystal clear no matter which airline you fly. Lindsay. Good to know, Gio. Thank you. Next tonight, the crisis at the border. Two more buses carrying asylum seekers from Texas arriving in New York City, greeted with handshakes, then offered food and shelter. New York's Mayor Eric Adams and other officials pleading with Texas Governor Greg Abbott to coordinate the arrivals. In the meantime, the city is launching Project Open Arms to help migrant children enroll in school. Here's ABC's Mola Lange. Tonight, migrants seeking asylum arrive at all hours in New York City. Officials are racing to come up with a plan to help care for them. We've opened 13 hotels to increase our capacity. Uh, and uh, we're looking at every single option that we have. Officials say more than 6,000 have come already in the last three months. Early this morning, two buses from Texas pulling into the Port Authority in Manhattan, carrying 78 people, among them at least 15 children, one just two months old, and a pregnant woman, days from delivery. She was taken to a hospital. Nightline meeting 18-year-old Amaro just after he got here last week. I'm still a boy who's very young. I hope to have better opportunities here, he says. It took him two months to reach Texas from Venezuela. 
With more and more children on those buses, today city officials announced a program called Project Open Arms to try and quickly integrate some 1,000 migrant children into New York City public schools, simplifying the enrollment process and calling for more bilingual teachers. Officials also had a message for Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who has been sending the buses on a one-way trip without coordinating with officials at their destinations. We're asking the governor to please stop and let all of us work together to figure out how we can best provide the assistance that these human beings need. Well, tonight, the mayor of New York City issuing an emergency solicitation, seeking bids for up to 5,000 hotel rooms and other facilities that can accommodate and provide services to these migrants on just a 24-hour notice, Lindsay. Still need more hotel rooms. Mola, thank you. And we're learning more about that deadly mid-air accident near San Jose, California. Two small planes colliding on their final approaches to an airport that has no air traffic control. It happened midday in clear weather, and the two pilots were speaking to each other on their radios just before the collision. Here's ABC's Alex Perche. Investigators tonight are desperate to understand how two planes collided midair just south of San Jose, California. Home security footage capturing one plane approaching the Watsonville Municipal Airport. Suddenly, debris as it falls from the sky. In the distance, a ball of fire as the second plane crashes at the airport. It was almost like a missile hitting another plane, as if the faster plane had gone right through the smaller plane. Traffic, twin is 740. Audio linked to the plane's tail numbers show the pilots communicating right before the collision. Full stop, looking for traffic on left base. Yeah, I see you. You're, uh, you're behind me. I'm going to go around then because you're coming at me pretty quick, man. The FAA says the first plane, which slammed into this field, was a single-engine Cessna with one person on board. The second that barreled into this airport hangar, a twin-engine Cessna with two people on board. The NTSB confirming three fatalities, adding that a dog in the larger Cessna also did not survive. You're supposed to see and avoid the other guy. But if the two pilots can't see each other because of the physiology of the airplane, one a high wing, the other a low wing, then you've got a major problem. Lindsay, FAA officials tell us that nobody on the ground was hurt, but Watsonville Municipal Airport, often used by private planes, is known as an uncontrolled airport, meaning that pilots signal their plans for approach without the direction of a control tower. Lindsay? Alex, thank you. And in Virginia, a federal judge has sentenced a British national, one of the so-called ISIS Beatles, to eight concurrent life sentences without parole for the kidnapping and deaths of four Americans nearly a decade ago. El Shafi El Sheikh was captured in Syria in 2018. Surviving witnesses testified to the group's brutality, including beheadings. Among their victims, journalists James Foley and Stephen Sotloff and aid workers Peter Kassig and Kayla Mueller. When we come back, the popular summer vacation spot that's reporting two shark attacks on the same day and the massive fire seen for miles in Massachusetts, the flames destroying buildings, cars, and boats. I started screening for colon cancer because of my late husband, Jay. I wish he could have seen our daughter, Ellie, get married on the best day of her life. But colon cancer took him from us, like it's taken so many others. That's why I've made it my mission to talk about getting screened and ask people to share their reasons why. I screen for my growing family. Being with them means everything to me. I screen for my girls. They're always surprising me. I screen for my son. I'm his biggest fan. If you're 45 or older and at average risk, it's time to screen. Today, there are more screening options than ever before, including Cologuard. Cologuard is non-invasive and finds 92% of colon cancers, even in early stages. It's not for those at high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your provider if Cologuard is right for you. Everyone has a reason to screen for colon cancer. If you're 45 or older, get started at missiontoscreen.com. Giorgio, look, the peanut butter box is here. Ralph, that's the Chewy Pharmacy box with our flea and tick meds. It's not peanut butter. The peanut butter box is here. I'm out. Pet prescriptions delivered to your door. Chewy. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar. Enter Powered by Protein Challenge for a chance to win big. 
A new shark alert heading into the weekend for visitors in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Authorities say that two people were attacked by sharks on the same day this week, less than half a mile apart. One swimmer was bitten on the leg. A little more than an hour later, a grandmother was severely bitten on the arm. She received hundreds of stitches. Emergency crews on the scene of a massive fire at a boatyard in Plymouth County, Massachusetts. Flames destroying several buildings, about two dozen cars and a number of boats. Smoke was visible for miles. Witnesses report hearing a series of explosions. The cause of the fire is now under investigation. When we come back, the mayor of New Orleans threatens to call off Mardi Gras celebrations. I'm Greg, I'm 68 years old. I do motivational speaking. In addition to the substitute teaching, I honestly feel that that's my calling to give back to younger people. I think most adults will start realizing that they don't recall things as quickly as they used to or they don't remember things as vividly uh, as they once did. I've been taking Prevagen for about three years now. People say to me periodically, man, you got a memory like an elephant. It's really, really helped me tremendously. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Secondhand smoke caused me to have asthma attacks, infections, and lung damage, and I never smoked. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. For just a little bit more, I can get you unlimited minutes, data, and text. Six hotspots, concert coupons, cable subscription, dental cleanings. We need all that? Do we need all that? I wouldn't think so. You should use consumer cellular. They have everything you need, nothing you don't. I'll throw in this tiny little fan. Car wash voucher? <laughs> Light up soap dispenser. I think you lost. Get the exact same coverage as the nation's leading carriers. All the talk, text, and data you need starting at $20. Consumer Cellular. Time. It's life's most precious commodity, especially when you have metastatic breast cancer. When your time is threatened, it's hard to invest in your future. Until now. Kiskali is helping women live longer than ever before when taken with an aromatase inhibitor or fulvestrant in HR-positive HER2-negative metastatic breast cancer. Kiskali is a pill that's proven to delay disease progression. Kiskali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Your future is ahead of you, so it's time to make the most of it with Kisgali. Because when you invest in yourself, everyone gets the best of you. If Raina's thinking about retirement, she'll get some help from Fidelity to envision what's possible and balance risk and reward. And with a clear plan, Raina can enjoy wherever she's headed next. That's the planning effect from Fidelity. In a recent clinical study, patients using Salon Pass Patch reported reductions in pain severity, using less or a lot less oral pain medicines and improved quality of life. Ask your doctor about Salon Pass. It's good medicine. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo and taking release. Golo saved my life. I was way overweight, and uh, that's what sent me down the path, was I, I wanted to make sure and live for my kid. Plain and simple. To the index now. Imagine New Orleans without Mardi Gras. Hard to do, but the mayor there is now warning a severe shortage of police officers may force the city to cancel the upcoming celebrations. Police officials say that they're considering asking neighboring agencies to help. When we come back, Little League teams pay tribute to an injured player, his little brother, taking to the field. When you live with moderate to severe Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, your day can be full of reminders of your condition. Never knowing, always wondering. You weren't made for UC or Crohn's, but gut-focused Antivio is. And Tivio works at the site of the problem to block certain inflammation-causing cells from entering the gut. Infusion and serious allergic reactions can happen during or after treatment. And Tivio may increase risk of infection, which can be serious. Although unlikely, a risk of PML, a rare, serious, potentially fatal brain infection, cannot be ruled out. Tell your doctor if you have an infection, experience frequent infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Liver problems can occur with Antivio. 
In clinical trials, Intivio helped many people achieve long-term relief and remission. Ask your doctor about Intivio. Intivio, Intivio, Intivio. It's easy to think that all money managers are pretty much the same, but at Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Different how? You saw high commission investment products, right? Nope, Fisher avoids them. Well, you must earn commissions on trades. Never at Fisher Investments. Okay, then you probably sneak in some hidden and layered fees. No, we structure our fees so we do better when clients do better. That might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. At Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. I typed in my dad's name, and I found his childhood home. He's been wondering about the address for 70 years, <laughs> and I found it in five minutes. Travel back in time in no time with the 1950 census on Ancestry. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill, once a day, that's effective without topical steroids. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. Plus, they felt fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, Cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save. Age is just a number. And mine's unlisted. Try Boost High Protein with 20 grams of protein for muscle health versus 16 grams in Ensure High Protein. Boost High Protein also has key nutrients for immune support. Boost High Protein. Liz Cheney, after her defeat, now the Sunday exclusive on ABC's This Week. She says the battle has just begun. What does it all mean for Trump and the future of the GOP? Liz Cheney, one-on-one, -on -one, exclusive, Sunday on ABC's This Week. Finally tonight, America Strong, Little League ball players setting the example. Signs of support all over Williamsport. Team Easton bracelets on nearly everyone's wrist. There are messages on shoes and on billboards. More messages on signs. Utah, let's ride. The opposing team from Tennessee even put on the hats of the Utah team and then went over to show support. Easton typically pitches and plays outfield for the Snow Canyon team from Santa Clara, Utah. He was with his team in Williamsport, Pennsylvania this week and scheduled to play in this afternoon's Little League World Series game. But early Monday morning, he suffered a serious head injury when he fell off the top bunk of a bed. He was airlifted to a children's hospital where he underwent life-saving surgery. And when the game he was scheduled to play in was about to start this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Little League World Series. This year, we seem to have a miracle of our own involving one of the players. Easton's father, Jace, shared this update on Easton's condition with ESPN's Julie Foudy. Just small little miracles each day that we're so grateful for. Woke up this morning, um, he's in the hallway with the nurses, and he's able to stand up and take some steps, and we couldn't be more grateful. Easton's younger brother, Brogan, was added to the roster, standing in for Easton in today's game. I'm excited to play on the team, and uh, I'm excited to just play for my brother. Doing it for his big bro. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Lindsay Davis for David and all of us here. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.